Hey everyone, Tom June back with another UK Space News Roundup. And as you can tell, my voice isn't quite my own at the moment. As mine wasn't quite up to scratch when it was time to record this video, I enlisted the help of another space fan, Space Kate, and she's lending me hers instead. I've never sounded better, right? Let's dive straight in. Welcome to UK Space News, I'm Tom June. Well, he's Tom June. If you want to stay up to date with the latest goings on from the UK space industry and beyond, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. You can follow me on X and support the channel on Patreon. And you can also follow Space Kate on X and catch her on various news channels talking space. Now, on to the news. High Impulse are inching ever closer to a maiden launch of their SR-75 sounding rocket not to be confused with the SR-71 Blackbird. The SR-75 is due to fly from Saxevoord Spaceport on Shetland sometime later this year. As we've previously mentioned, High Impulse's very first launch is actually happening at the Canuba Test Range in Southern Australia. Now if you recall, High Impulse were awarded a launch licence by the UK Civil Aviation Authority to carry out a launch of the SR-75 between December 2023 and November 2024. But when they were ready to set a date for the flight, they were not satisfied with the condition of the launch facilities at Saxevoord. As we know, Launchpad Fredo is going to be exclusively used by Rocket Factory at Augsburg for their maiden RFA-1 flight, and we'll have more on them in a moment. But back to High Impulse, who moved their maiden launch to Australia, with the rocket making its way to the Southern Hemisphere earlier this month. Well, in this past week, High Impulse shared this video on X, showcasing the rocket arriving at the launch site, and giving us perhaps the best unboxing video this year. The SR-75 was unwrapped from its protective travel case, and then moved over to the integration facility for final configuration ahead of the planned launch on April 30th. Luckily for all of us, good friend of this channel, Josh Keegan, will be covering the launch live and in person, and you can stream his coverage on his channel, The Space Down Under. Make sure to check out the link in the description and click on the bell, because this is one you don't want to miss. Of course, High Impulse will be hoping for a successful first run of its rocket, which utilises hybrid propulsion technology. That's a mix of solid paraffin and liquid oxygen to power that 7 kN motor. This means the rocket has variable thrust capacity, allowing it to thrust vector as it powers its way up to space for this suborbital flight. Its aim is ultimately to carry a 250 kg payload to an altitude of 300 km. Of course, what they're really hoping for here is to ensure that all their tech, being flown for the very first time, works as planned. Because much like Skyrora's Skylark L sounding rocket, it really is just a test article for its bigger brother, the SL-1, which is a three-stage, fully orbital class medium lift rocket, with nine of those high Plox 75 hybrid engines on the first stage. A recent design change to the SL-1 means it's now estimated to be 33 metres tall, with a squared off aft section for the first stage to better accommodate the engines. It's still designed to carry 600 kilos to low Earth orbit, but a new kick stage has also been introduced, called High Move. That's short for Hybrid Multipurpose Orbital Vehicle, which will also use hybrid motors to place payloads into specific orbits once in space. For us here in the UK, it will give us a good look at the rocket, which may just become the very first to launch from Saxevoord Spaceport later this year. So, give High Impulse and Josh your support as we count down to this exciting launch. Speaking of that, I want to give a huge shout out to my amazing Patreon supporters who continue to make these videos happen. It's been a crazy old time full of changes here at my new HQ, and you guys, and gals, literally help keep the channel running. So thank you so very much indeed. If you want to help support the channel, and in turn, help get me to Shetland to bring you first-hand incredible footage from the UK's first rocket launches, then head over to tomjune.com where you can find links to both my Patreon and my merchandise store. Or follow the links in the video description. Now, we mentioned Rocket Factory Augsburg a little earlier, 
and just this week they showcased a few interesting photos on X as they announced that five of their 70 kN Helix engines have been mated to the first stage of the RFA-1 rocket, ahead of their upcoming test campaign at Saxevoord this summer. This is really exciting as it marks the first full-scale test campaign at the launch site, which will lead directly into a flight. It's interesting to note that only five engines have been mated to the lower section, as the RFA-1 is designed to have nine engines as part of the first stage. There has been some speculation recently that RFA are changing the design and configuration of the 1. However, it seems the changes planned are actually for the scaled-up 1 MAX, which will see 13 Helix engines used on its first stage, combined with a larger overall size to increase the payload capacity of the rocket. Of course, at this point, it's all speculation, and until we actually see the MAX in production, we won't know for sure. What we do know is that the 1 is designed to carry 1300 kilograms to a 500 km sun-synchronous orbit, which is very much the trend for medium-lift rockets across Europe right now. The UK Space Agency wants to position the UK as the home of small satellite launches for the European market, but questions do still remain about just how well the likes of RFA, High Impulse, Orbex and Skyrora will be able to stave off competition from SpaceX, whose rideshare Falcon 9 flights have proven so cost-effective that the likes of Albert Orbital, based in Glasgow, have been flying their payloads on that rocket several times per year. The European launchers really do need to start coming online and offering as much reusability as possible to truly compete. RFA are planning for the one to be recoverable and reusable, as well as to eventually use biopropellants, similar to those planned by Orbex and Skyrora. It's shaping up to be an interesting summer, as RFA put the one through its paces ahead of a planned launch in August. It really relies on both the spaceport and the rocket to be ready in time. Do you think they'll manage to launch before the end of 2024? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Speaking of Orbex, it was announced this week that they've received another cash injection as part of Series C funding, to the tune of £16.7 million. This will directly help drive development of the Orbex Prime, which we're being told is at an advanced stage. I'm still really curious as to why Orbex don't share more, or really anything, from behind the scenes on the Prime, especially compared with other manufacturers who are so open these days from the likes of SpaceX, Rocket Lab, Ariana Spas, and even PLD Space of Spain, who have also received a cash injection of €120 million Euros to help to develop their orbital class Miura 5 following successful launch of the Miura 1 last year. In fact, this is far from the first time I've mentioned the lack of imagery or information from Orbex concerning the development of the Prime. And it's not just me saying this as a casual viewer. They've attended conferences all over the world, have the backing of the UK Space Agency and the Scottish Government, so you'd expect to see more. Whereas Skyrora, who at times have appeared further ahead in development of the Skyrora XL, are working with much less cash. So what we have here is a company who are apparently building THE UK rocket to lead us into the new space age, but who are showing very little evidence of how that rocket is coming along. I've actually no doubt that they are working hard behind the scenes, consider they're also building an entire spaceport at the same time as designing and developing a unique, reusable rocket. But wouldn't it be great to actually see some new shots of the Black Beauty and those 3D printed engines roaring to life? So yeah, come on Orbex, let's see what you've got. One thing Orbex did share with us earlier this month was news that they've achieved a patent for their petal fold re-entry design which sees the interstage ring between the first and second rocket stages utilised and reconfigured for use in re-entry. Normally, the interstages, such as those so beautifully captured during the Apollo missions, are simply discarded after stage separation. But Orbex plan to use theirs to open out and create a working drag surface to help slow the spent first stage down and re-enter, saving on the amount of fuel required to be burned in the upper atmosphere. We see these burns practically every other day when Falcon 9 performs a re-entry burn before relighting those Merlin engines for the landing burn. Orbex, being a proponent of the Green Space Initiative, 
want to avoid this burn altogether, and believe that they can instead carry out a Kerbal Space Program style atmosphere skimming manoeuvre to bring the rocket's velocity down and safely come back to Earth for a splashdown in the ocean, assisted by parachutes. If this does work as planned, then it's quite the ingenious move, as it requires very little change to the rocket design and can actually increase the amount of payload capacity thanks to not needing to carry extra fuel for a burn in space. So yes, more of that kind of insight please. We can't wait to see what you've cooked up for us next. In a late addition to this update, it's just been announced that Saxaford Spaceport has been issued their range control licence. This grants them permission to clear and control the downrange zone of a rocket launch, ensuring marine traffic is safely out of the way should anything go wrong during the initial stages of flight. So yes, it really is all coming together nicely as far as Saxavord's regulatory requirements are concerned, and this is another piece of the puzzle added ahead of the first flight. Well, there we have it for this week. What do you think? Will High Impulse pull off a launch at the first time of asking? Remember to check out The Space Down Under and catch that live stream from right there at the launch site in Southern Australia. Thank you again to the amazing Space Kate for offering to help complete this week's video. Give her a follow on X and show your appreciation. Thank you all for watching. I've been Tom Jew and I've been Kate. I'll catch you next time.